G'day, Jamie from Anaconda here, and today I'm going to be talking to you about everything solar when it comes to four-wheel driving. We'll look at all the different types of solar panels, controllers, and how to pair them up, so you can get the most out of your setup when you're going off-grid. If you're going out in the bush for more than a day or two, solar's a real game changer. It can keep your fridge running, your lights on, and your gadgets charged, without the need to start your four-wheel drive or fire up the generator. But to get the most out of your solar setup, you need to know how it all works, especially the solar controller. A solar controller sits between your solar panel and your battery and manages the power coming in, so you don't overcharge a battery. There are two types of solar controllers, PWM and MPPT. As the newer, smarter option, MPPT is more efficient and pulls more usable power from your panels, especially in low light. PWM still works fine for basic setups, but if you want the best bang for your buck, you just can't beat MPPT. If you're using a portable power station like the June 4 wheel drive 24 amp hour lithium power pack, chances are it's already got a built-in controller. So if your solar gear plugs straight into one of those, you won't need to add a second controller. It'll just confuse the system and drop your charging efficiency. If you've got a dual battery setup, it's really common for the DC to DC charger to have an MPPT controller. June DC to DC chargers all have built-in controllers and dedicated plugs for solar panels. This means you won't need to buy a controller. You can just plug your panels into your charger and you're all set. So when do you need a solar controller? When you're using a battery box, like our June powered battery box, you can't plug your panels directly in. That means you need to add a controller to ensure you don't damage your batteries. When it comes to solar panels, you've got a few options to choose from. There are fixed panels, like our June 120 watt fixed solar panel, which can mount on your roof and charge while you drive. They're super convenient, but the downside is you can't angle them once you've parked so you need to park your vehicle in the sun to charge your batteries. Folding panels, like our June 160 watt slimline folding solar panel, are a good middle ground. Since they're foldable, they can be stored easily, but because they're still a glass panel, they're really efficient. You don't need to mount them, you just set them up wherever you like. That way you can park your car in the shade while charging your batteries. Finally, you've got solar blankets, like our June 120 watt folding solar blanket. These are super portable, easy to store, and great for all sorts of applications. All you need to do is spread them out on the ground or peg them in with the included kickstands. They're small, but don't underestimate them. The largest size produces 300 watts. So how much solar capacity will you need? Well, a good rule of thumb is to match your solar input to your daily power usage and make sure the panels can recharge your batteries in a day's worth of decent sunlight. Let's say you've got a 100 amp hour lithium battery. You want a minimum of around 200 watts of solar to keep up with a fridge, lights, and a few devices. Really, what solar setup you need depends on how you use it. If you're just going for the occasional overnight trip, a small folding panel or blanket might be enough to top things up. For weekenders, a roof-mounted panel plus a portable backup will give you more flexibility. For more remote touring, go big with fixed roof panels plus folding panels or blankets as backups just to give yourself plenty of juice, even on those cloudy days. Also, there's a few common solar mistakes you want to avoid. If you're using a power station, check its max solar input. If it only accepts 100 watt, plugging in a 300 watt panel won't be of any benefit. Also, shade hurts output. Even if one corner of a panel is covered up, it can really cut into its output. So make sure panels are in full sun and not under a tree or beside an awning. Finally, keep your panels clean. Dust, dirt and debris can seriously affect performance. So give your panels a wipe before you set up especially if you've been driving on dusty tracks. So that's the long and the short of solar power and full driving. Honestly, it's not really that complicated, but a little bit of know-how goes a long way. By matching your gear correctly and avoiding rookie mistakes, you'll be powered up and ready for anything. If you want to find out more about solar or anything in your four-wheel drive power setup, just swing by your local Anaconda store and we're always happy to help. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel for more tips, gear guides and adventure inspiration.